let's get this Wowee computer built. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Today we're going to be taking a look at getting the hard drive, the SSD, and the software installed on the Wowee computer. But before we head over to the workbench, a couple of quick notes. Uh, first of all, in the last video on this little computer, I did fail to mention that it does have the micro SD card slot built into it. So you can still use some micro SD cards for additional storage. In addition to that, when I did my original power consumption checks, I was doing that with the pre-installed Windows software. What I found interesting was after I got Linux Mint installed, that power consumption number dropped. And finally, this is running an x86 processor, which means we won't be able to use build a -Pi. But stick around, I think you're going to like what we're going to do instead. Let's go ahead and head over to the workbench and get this build started. Okay, so we should have everything laying here on the workbench that we're going to need. I picked up a one terabyte solid state drive that we're going to be installing. And guys, I will leave links to everything down in the description below if you're interested. So, one terabyte solid state drive. In addition to that, I have picked up some RAM. This is two sticks of 16 gig RAM. This is uh, DDR4, which should give us a total of 32 gigs once we're done. In addition to that, we do have the Wowee computer and my favorite, or at least my new favorite, little precision screwdriver. I believe this one's Hoto or something like that. I really like this one. Hopefully that's going to focus there for the camera. I really like this little precision driver set. It's got a magnetic tail cap. A, it spins, so that makes it super helpful. But B, it stores quite a few bits there in the bottom of the, uh, of the driver. So we'll be using that. To disassemble this let's go ahead and see if we can get this taken apart we should have four screws here that we need to remove and then we'll need to crack the case now that we've got the four screws removed i'm going to turn this up on a corner here and these Four tabs have to be pried off, so there's one on each corner. Uh, I would recommend using a plastic tool instead of a knife, but uh, I'm not scared of damaging mine, so let's just go ahead and see if we can get this to pop off. Just give it a little bit of pressure there and pry those four tabs apart. After you've got those four tabs separated, it should be just as easy as lifting off that top cover. Be careful now, there is a couple of wires that's attached to the top case, but that should give us access to everything we're going to need. You'll see the original 128 gig solid state drive here, and that original eight gigs of memory here. Let's see if we can get that swapped out. We'll go ahead and start with the solid state drive. So there's just one screw that holds this drive in, and we can find it right over here on the very end. Let's go ahead and get that unscrewed. And then we can remove that SSD. Just pull it back out like that. And we'll go ahead and take the new one and pop it right in its place. Let's just secure that with that screw again, and we will have the new drive installed. All right, hard drive down. Now we just need to tackle the RAM. We'll go ahead and start with installing this one first, and then this one second. So, just take the RAM, we'll slide it right in there. Once you get it in, it should be as easy as just pressing down. You guys can probably see these little tabs right here on each side. Those are going to come over and lock it in place. And I didn't show it real well when I pull the other piece out. When you start to remove the RAM, you just want to push right here on those little tabs. Those little metal tabs, you push both of them out and that RAM will pop up. We got one stick in. Let's go ahead and get the other stick installed. Make sure you get it pressed in firmly this direction. And then once we've got that, go ahead and just press it down right like that. And that should be both the RAM and the SSD installed. We just need to button everything back up. 
Once you got those four corners lined back up and pressed down firmly, we'll go ahead and reinsert those four screws that we removed. With everything buttoned back up, we can go ahead and jump over to the other computer, download and flash Mint to a USB drive. A quick side note here, one of the things I like to do is keep all of my original components together. So I grabbed a simple white envelope and labeled it so I know where it came from and what's inside. Now I can just go ahead and drop that RAM and SSD into the envelope and I won't have any trouble remembering it in the future. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get Linux Mint downloaded. So you can just head over to linuxmint.com. We'll go ahead and download 21.1. So we'll go ahead and click on the download button and that will bring you into the download page. Now, I'm going to choose the Cinnamon Edition, but if one of the other editions suits your needs better, by all means, use it. I'll go ahead and click Download, and we'll give that a few minutes to download. Once your download is complete, you're going to use something like Bolina to go ahead and flash that download to a USB drive. So we'll go ahead and click on this Flash from File button, locate that Linux Mint 21.1 ISO that you downloaded, We'll choose it, and then we're going to select our target device. In this case, I'm going to use this 32 gig SD card, or I'm sorry, USB drive that I've got inserted into the computer. Once we have that, we'll go ahead and say select. Be careful on that last screen. Make sure you get on the right drive. Next up, we'll go ahead and click flash. The Mac's going to ask me for my pseudo passwords. We'll go ahead and give it that and then give this just a few minutes to flash to the USB drive. Once you've got the OS flashed to your USB drive, go ahead and insert that into the computer. I've hooked up a USB-C monitor, the Rotom monitor. I'm going to go ahead and power up the computer, and then as soon as I see the logo screen, we're gonna start pressing F2 on the keyboard. That should bring you into the BIOS screen. Let's go ahead and move over to the boot order. And we just want to make sure that the USB device is in our boot order. In my case, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, F10 to save and exit. It'll ask me if I want to save that configuration. I'm going to tell it yes. And then it should boot into the new Linux Mint OS. Right here, it's asking us which way we want to boot into it. I'm going to choose the first option. Once the system gets booted up, you do need to go ahead and connect it to your Wi-Fi. Once you're connected to Wi-Fi, let's go up to the top left corner and we'll double click install Linux Mint. Go ahead and walk through the prompts and give Linux Mint a bit of time to install. After the installation of the OS completed, I did go ahead and load the VNC server onto this computer so that we could view this a little bit better going forward. First thing I wanna do is open up a terminal window I'm going to run df space hyphen h, go ahead and press return, and you'll see that I've got 880 gigs of available space on that one terabyte drive. So it looks like it's recognizing the entire drive. Next, I want to run free space hyphen h, go ahead and press return, and it looks like it's seeing all 32 gigs of that RAM. Now, we just need to clear the screen. I'm going to go ahead and head over at this point to github.com forward slash km4ack. And here's what you guys have been looking for, and that's uh, the end of build a -Pi. Well, not exactly the end just yet, but we will be transitioning away from build a -Pi in the near future, probably six, six months or so from now. Don't fear, though, because we're going to be replacing it with something better. Uh, let's go ahead and head over to the repositories, and you're going to find 7.3 Linux. Now, the cool thing about 7.3 Linux is it supports both the Raspberry Pi and x86 builds like Ubuntu or Mint. So, if you've been around the forums, you may have already heard about this, but if you haven't been around the forums, 7.3 Linux is something that I started, uh, I guess, about eight months ago. It's at a pretty stable place right now, but we will start uh, more development on this later this year. Once you get to the 7.3 Linux page though, we're going to scroll down to the install command and we'll just click these two little squares here to copy that command. 
It's just as simple as Buildapi was to get up and running. We only need that one command. So let's go ahead and open the terminal window back up and let's go ahead and paste in that command. And I may not have git installed. I'll have to double check that. Yep, I don't have git installed. So what we wanna do is run sudo apt install git. And then we'll give it a hyphen y out there at the end so it doesn't ask us again if we want to install it. Enter your sudo password, press return, and give this just a second to install git. Now that that's finished up, we'll go ahead and clear the screen and we'll try that git command again. This time, now that we've got Git installed, it is going to go ahead and download that script and start the installation process. The first screen you're presented with simply asks you for your call sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my call sign and press OK. Next, you'll be presented with a welcome screen, just telling you basically that 7.3 Linux is build a pie on steroids. Go ahead and click OK here. And then give it a second, it's going to check and see if you already have anything installed on this particular computer. Once those checks are complete, you're going to be presented with a screen like this. So I'm going to go ahead and check a few things, click the Build It button down in the bottom right corner, and let 7.3 Linux do its thing. Okay, so after giving 7.3 Linux a chance to do its thing and run through all of the build, I started checking things on the system and noticed that Vara did not install the first time through. In fact, Vara and Pat uh, neither install the first time through. I went in and got to looking at the logs, which I actually saw this as the uh, installer was working, but it says that uh, there is a missing dependencies or unmet dependencies. So it suggests that I run this command right here, this apt space hyphen hyphen fix hyphen broken space install. I went ahead and ran that command. It sorted out the dependencies for JS8 call. I believe that's the one that was missing. Once that was sorted out, I went back through 7.3 Linux's menu and went ahead and installed Vara again and Pat again. On that time through, everything installed as it should. So there's the full build of the Woe computer, including upgrading the hard drive, upgrading the RAM, and then installing the ham radio related applications with 7.3 Linux. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7.3.